With this minor scale guitar lesson video, we'll take that first step in learning how to solo and improvise with the minor scale by showing you how to play the minor scale box pattern. And along with box pattern diagrams, guitar tabs, and minor scale exercises, we'll cover it all with a step-by-step -step approach. Natural minor scale can generally be described as having a sad or serious mood or tone and it's used in various styles of music ranging from flamenco to jazz to rock and a more academic term for the natural minor scale is the Aeolian scale uh, but most musicians simply refer to it as the minor scale and what we're going to do with this lesson is we're going to focus on learning to play the natural minor scale in a box pattern form before getting started, if you are a beginner, you want to use a guitar pick when soloing. Uh, if you don't use a guitar pick, you will get a blister on your thumb right away. Uh, a guitar pick gives you more volume. Also down the road, uh, it will enable you to apply a little bit more speed technique to your soloing. And most of the popular guitar solos you've heard where the minor scale is used, uh, the guitarist is using a guitar pick. So um, again, if you're just starting off, just pinch it between your first finger and thumb and after a few sessions using a pick won't be an issue at all. Now we're going to learn how to play the minor scale one note at a time and with that we go to our fretting hand uh, which for most of us is the left hand. And we're going to place our first finger on the bottom string which is the sixth string fifth fret and again with the pick we're going to pluck that note that's our first note and what we want to do now is sync this up with the guitar tab diagram shown on the screen here. A quick review of reading guitar tabs. Uh, the six horizontal lines represent the six strings on the guitar. The top line on the tab is the one string while the bottom line is the six string. The numbers on the lines represent the frets to play. So that first note we're playing with our first finger on that fifth fret you see the five showing up on that sixth string now on my tabs what I do uh, for especially for early beginner lessons I also include the finger numbers to fret with so that one below the five indicates the first finger fretting that note so first finger on the sixth string fifth fret and there's our first note and now, uh, to begin, we're going to now approach it one string at a time. Uh, there's a three note phrase to begin uh, this pattern, and it's going to go starting with that fifth fret, five, then third finger to the seventh fret, and then pinky, or fourth finger, to the eighth fret. Again, syncing that up to the tab, five, seven, eight, all on that bottom sixth string. Five, seven, eight. Now, um, I'm lifting off, especially if you're a beginner. That's going to be a bit of a stretch with the fingers. You're going to have to extend them a bit, uh, which is good because you want to get that workout uh, to increase your flexibility. Um, you can lift your first finger off to reach those other notes, but not too far off the guitar because if it's too far off, you got to place it back down as we move up the strings. So let's do that five, seven, eight again. Then we're going to now move to the next string. From the sixth, we shift to the fifth string. And a little um, heads up here, our first finger is going to remain aligned along the fifth fret for the whole thing. So it's just a matter of shifting the one finger over. And then, good news here, we do the same sequence. Five, seven, eight, on the next string, which is the fifth string. So the opening sequence that we've got so far is six notes, five, seven, eight. The next string, five, seven, eight. Let's do that one more time. Five, seven, eight. Five, seven, eight. Now if you can play those two strings, uh, the next pair of strings shouldn't be too challenging because as we move up now to the fourth string uh, we just go five seven and 
and then same thing as we go up to the next string. Now another thing I want to clear up, we are going up the strings. Uh, again, if you're a beginner, that may not make sense. This is actually down to most folks, but uh, the deal is on guitar. Everything on guitar is based on sound. If you're moving higher up on sound, you're moving in this direction on the guitar. So when I say move up a string, you're actually moving to a higher sounding string. Um, so let's put it together, um, those first four strings now. Five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight, five, seven, five, seven. Uh, let's do a couple practice runs uh, to get those four strings down. Five, seven, eight. Five, seven, eight. Five, seven. Five, seven. And then uh, we're going to move to the second string now. And here, we're going to, again, we're starting with the fifth fret. Uh, we have a three note phrase. It'll be five, six, eight. So a little variation there on the three notes compared to the five, seven, eights. We now use our second or middle finger for the first time. Five, six, eight on the two string. So let's go back to the beginning and see if we can put those five strings together. Five, seven, eight. Five, seven, eight. Five, seven. Five, seven. Five, six, eight. Let's do one more. Speed up just a little bit. Five, seven, eight. Five, seven, eight. Five, seven. Five, seven. Five, six, eight. Now we move to the last string, which is the one string. And to end this, we're going to play a five note phrase on the top string. And the sequence is going to be five, seven, eight, seven, five, letting that last note ringer sustain. Let's do that a couple times. Five, seven, eight, seven, five. And if you're listening closely, it sort of has that sort of serious Spanish like sort of tone to it, that last riff. Dun, 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 dun. And I'll do that one more time, slowing it down a little bit. With that, let's do a slow walkthrough. That is the complete pattern. And here we go from the beginning. Five, seven, eight. Five, seven, eight. Five, seven. Five, seven. Five, six, eight. Five, seven, eight, seven. Now before we play the scale again, I want to give you a couple pointers as far as how you approach learning and practicing the scale. Uh, number one, you want to prioritize um, playing correct notes over anything else. Uh, your first priority, playing correct notes, because otherwise if you make a mistake and play an incorrect note, uh, that's going to result in too many uh, stops and start overs. If uh, you go at it slowly, in fact there is a saying in music, slow is fast. If you play slow notes uh, without any errors, you'll get there quicker. Uh, if you make too many mistakes, again, too many stops and start overs. Um, once you get everything correct, then you focus on clarity or clear sounding notes. And the last thing you worry about is speed. And again, slow is fast. Um, if you focus on correct notes with clarity, speed just naturally starts to happen with repetition of playing everything correct. So uh, another thing uh, regarding how you're fretting, you want the fingers as close to the frets as you can get without touching the frets uh, because it is the left hand that uh, controls the clarity. So and that is by playing close to the frets and also arching your fingers, trying to use your fingertips as much as possible 
uh, and that'll avoid partially muting adjacent strings. Now that's just a quick run through here. But now what we're going to do in the next clip is we're going to look at how this pattern can be applied to reading a box pattern diagram. The diagram to the right shows the minor scale in a box pattern form. And a box pattern is essentially an aerial view of a scale going across the six strings, with the sixth bottom string being shown on the far left and the first or top string being shown on the far right. And the finger numbers to fret with are shown in the circles. So all the notes we played from the previous clips will fit within this box pattern. Um, the one drawback to, about the box pattern is it doesn't tell you the exact running order of notes, uh, but it's a pattern to sort of visualize. And regardless of what scale or style of music you're going to play, um, guitarists usually visualize box patterns when they're sewing along the fretboard. And so there are several box patterns used to play the minor scale. Uh, but the pattern we're focusing on this lesson is the most often used, and we can refer to it as the standard minor scale box pattern. And so let's um, play the pattern again, this time looking at from a box pattern perspective. So here we go from the top. This time I won't call off the frets. You should know them by now, but uh, let's see if you can keep up with this pace. One, two, ready, go. What we'll do with the next clip is we'll fine-tune playing the box pattern by repeating it three times in a row, and we'll also pick up the pace a little bit uh, and play it at a slightly faster tempo. Now one advantage to learning this minor scale box pattern is that you can clearly hear the intended sad or serious mood of the scale. And if you're able to associate moods with scales, that's going to help you develop the ability to learn songs and melodies by ear later on. Uh, in time, if you simply recognize that the mood of a guitar solo is either being sad or serious, uh, you're going to associate that mood with the minor scale. And then you'll be able to immediately begin to jam or improvise with the track without having to rely on any sort of written notation. For beginners, the primary objective early on is to develop your finger strength and flexibility. And not only is playing this minor scale box pattern a great exercise for the fingers, uh, this same box pattern is actually used in many classic guitar solos. And speaking of getting the fingers in shape, what we'll do with the next clip is again we'll review the box pattern three consecutive times, but this time we're going to pick up the speed or tempo a little bit. Of course, don't forget to prioritize playing correct notes with clarity. Uh, give them some decent volume, uh, but let's work on improving the speed with the next clip.
Once you have this lesson down, the next step is to move up to the next lesson or level of minor scale soloing basics. And with that next lesson, we'll show you how to solo with the minor scale in any key.